to demonstrate the utility of innovative networking technologies and newer protocols to a broad audience and to facilitate their meaningful evaluation, deployment on a large enough scale, but in isolated network test beds so that we can avoid internet service disruptions was the need of the hour. And the networks demanded the change to free the global communications infrastructure from stagnation and to enable these newer technologies to be deployed and used, at least on an experimental basis. Hence, virtualization, that is creating the right abstractions in the network, emerged as a key solution that can disentangle the rigidities of the internet infrastructure and provide the flexibility to deploy and test the innovative networking technologies and network protocols on a large scale networks without causing any delay or disruptions to the services. In this regard, I shall be discussing three of the fundamental and pioneering works that led the way to diversify and break the internet impasse. I have shared the links from where you would be able to access and enjoy reading these works. The first work is Towards a Diversified Internet by David Taylor and Jonathan Turner. Here, the authors voiced that the networking community faced two specific challenges. One is how to build the a better internet. And second, an even more fundamental challenge was how to build an internet that enables competition from alternative approaches so that it is more open and also has a renewal in a way that the changes on the internet can become an ordinary everyday process rather than being treated as an unacceptable disruptions to the already established order. To this extent, the authors proposed for diversified internet, that is, through which the support for multiple meta networks on a shared network infrastructure can be realized. This would help eliminate any barriers and even end the network impasse so that it could enable the means for large-scale deployment of competing alternatives. In this way, this diversified internet necessitated the need for virtualization, wherein the authors advocated that virtualization as not just a tool to break the impasse, but also to affect the pluralist networking technologies, that is, to enable newer players to work, compete, and bring the innovations on board. Second is the work by Larry Peterson and others, a blueprint for introducing the disruptive technology into the internet. Here, they pitched for the overlay network as an opportunity to radically change the networking architecture instead of merely providing just the limited enhancements. For this, they fundamentally emphasized on four key design principles for such an overlay-based networking testbed. First is to have the network services be able to define and run continuously and have access to the overlay resources in a continued fashion. Second is to have the control over the resources that are shared and also distributed. In a sense, the same resource may be used by different network services at the same time. Third, the overlay management services should be unbundled and run in their own slice. In effect, what it means is to have these overlay managements decoupled from actually having the overlay services that are going to provide the core networking services. And to achieve all of this, the fourth important design principle would be to have the right set of APIs that are designed to promote the application development and easier deployment of the networking services over these overlay networks. In essence, what these fundamental design principles guided to were to build a service-oriented network architecture, where we focus on the discrete network services instead of thinking network as a monolithic design and enable new means to define the network software components that are really reusable and interoperable via the service interfaces. Further, again, Larry Peterson and others, though in their work overcoming the internet impasse through network virtualization, pitched for the means of how to build the virtual test beds and the way to utilize virtualization 
in two distinct ways for these virtual test bits. First, we can envision virtualization as a means for architectural changes. That is, fundamentally, virtualization arguments to provide the flexibility to develop new architectures. And this is termed in what we call as an internet purist approach, where we see internet as a monolithic view of the architecture that is centered around the IP layer, that is the waste of the hour class being the IP and it provides you the flexibility to add newer services or use newer means at the layers above and layer below it. And in this view, the virtualization provides only a means to install new architectures but not a fundamental aspect of the architecture itself. That is, overlay at best ensures to deliver the flexibility on the architecture to but it will not rule out the existing hourglass aspect of using the IP and build the services on top of it. And second, the authors also mentioned to employ virtualization as the ends, where the virtualization can play a central role to support many components and to foster constant change. And this is what they termed as the pluralist view, wherein the flexibility is derived from adding or augmenting multiple overlays. And in this view, the dynamic and evolving architecture at any point be defined as the union of various existing overlays and protocols. And this would facilitate to have the ability to support multiple coexisting overlays. And this would then become the architecture's crucial universal piece, just as what we saw as IP in the hourglass model. And in fact, these efforts resulted in the creation of a large scale overlay based testbed at Planet Lab. And in a nutshell, these works really enabled to have the networking test bits that would enable the researchers to readily deploy and test their innovative technologies on a large scale without really affecting or having to wait for the things to be deployed on the internet in, and also not disrupt any of the services in the internet. So let us try to look at this work overcoming the internet in passe through virtualization in a bit more detailed manner to understand what they really meant by virtualization and how it was affected. And here the authors when they said network virtualization they meant network virtualization to be adopted as a potential strategy for addressing the ossification of the internet through the means of providing the virtualized network overlays. And to build such overlays, the authors fundamentally said to meet specific requirements. And the three important requirements that were necessitated to be met included one, that the researchers must have the ability to experiment readily with the newer architectures, albeit on the live traffic, that is, the experimental testbed should not require the researchers to work in a different environment than what we consider with internet with the live traffic. So the flexibility for the researchers is to have that access to the live traffic and be able to experiment as on those with the characteristics resonating with what you would see on the internet. And second is the deployment path. Once we have tested and validated these innovative technologies, the deployment path should not be any different and should be easy to bring it on practice when we want to deploy it on the internet. So the two test beds in essence, when you look at the overlay test bed and the underlying internet test bed should not differ in any means for the deployment perspective. And third, the solutions to ensure that these broad range of architectural problems that were faced by the internet be addressed effectively in the sense that when we develop the test beds, these test beds, the means to manage them, the means to provide access to them should be far more simpler and be readily accessible and usable from the researcher's point of view than opposed to the hardening of the internet infrastructure. So in a nutshell, in such a virtualized network, multiple virtual networks can coexist on top of the shared substrate or the underlying internet infrastructure and these different virtual networks then provide an alternative to test and 
deliver different end-to-end -end packet delivery systems, different protocols altogether, and even different packet formats. And such virtual networks can be implemented by means of virtual routers and virtual links. And realizing such an infrastructure would mean that you would be able to build your own network on top of the internet. And further, to realize what I just mentioned, consider this model here, where the gray topology down here represents or reflects the ossified internet structure. And now, on top of this, we want to build a networking overlay, which will disentangle this physical substrate and provide a virtual network, which on which the researchers can readily experiment. So we can, in essence, build multiple overlays on top of the same underlying ossified physical substrate network. And through this, we can, in essence, have the ability to support multiple coexisting overlays on which different researchers can work simultaneously. So to understand in effect, what we just discussed, let's step back and look at what this virtualization means in principle and how it is going to be adopted or affected for the network. In essence, this virtualization, when we look at the virtual machines, which are far more familiar to us, they take the underlying physical resources, that's basically the compute, memory and <coughs> aspects, and for each of the application's demands, the requirement is to provide an environment on which the applications, distinct applications can be built and run in isolation. And this is achieved through the virtualization of the physical compute and memory resources and enabling what we call as these virtual machines. And this is enabled by the development of a hypervisor that abstracts out the aspects of how to run a program on a given physical memory and CPU and presents itself the APIs to each of these virtual machines that can be heterogeneous in nature and support different applications through the means of providing x86 environment. So this decoupling through the hypervisor of the physical resources to the presentation of virtual resources in each of these virtual machines enabled the means to emulate the and abstract out the hardware resources and run many of the applications in isolation much easily. And the same now we want to apply for the networks. And what it in essence it really means is considering the physical network, which consists of many of the physical switches and routers and the links joining them, we want to build a network virtualization platform alike to the hypervisor which basically now abstracts these physical network resources and provides these virtual network resources, which then the workloads that the researchers are interested in are able to try out. And the means for the researchers to do all of this is to enable the network stack, that is layer two to layer seven onwards, the means of how the application layer protocols, network layer protocols, transport layer protocols are all provided as a means on which the independent workloads can experiment and build. And this way, it provides an isolated framework for all of these workloads to coexist on a same virtualization net, virtualized network or the same underlying substrate or a physical network. And this is the flexibility that would enable for transparent abstraction of the physical computing platforms and resources and enable to provide multiple logical views for the same underlying physical network. And in essence, each view can be completely different from the other, and the workloads would then be able to define their own networks, their own requirements of the networking topology and run without worrying about the other workloads that are also going to be run on the same physical network and failure of one would not disrupt anything on the underlying services nor any of the other workloads that would continue to run as it is. Thus, a faithful reproduction of the services over a physical network 
providing the means of what you would see as a live traffic on the physical network be made available for running different workloads. And this decoupling of the services provided by the network from a physical infrastructure is what we mean by network virtualization.